looking at the challenges that we're facing in the world and how I can pull from that experience of that great transformative movement in the 60s is very exciting to me and it's ongoing. When I was working with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. as the education director for his organization, we ran a training program called Citizenship Education Program. People had to discover, and they did discover in that program, that there is a power inherent in all of us. Just as the Citizenship Education Program empowered people to understand and claim their full civil rights as American citizens, the Dorothy Cotton Institute is working to empower people to pursue the full realization of our human rights as global citizens. Not only do people have human rights based on international treaties, but they have a right to be educated about those rights. We've already provided training to over 200 educators on integrating the human rights curriculum into Ithaca's public schools. We're working now with Dorothy to adapt the core principles of the Citizenship Education Program and to offer grassroots leadership development intensives for people who want to work nonviolently for social change. Nonviolence is not to be confused with passivity. It is a very powerful recognition of compassion as probably the only thing that can save us as a species. Compassion includes speaking truth to power and recognizing the rights of other people. Because of a transformation that's happening in oneself, uh, you, you take an action based on that. For example, a group can decide, we have a new awareness now, and we're not going to accept uh, some maltreatment or some inequity, like some people getting paid more than other people based on either gender or race. People understand that they want change, but they don't know what change they want. And if they can't articulate it, that's certainly one thing that we're going to work on in a training workshop, for example. The education and training we're offering starts with people sharing stories of their real life experiences and the wisdom they've gained as they responded to injustice. We believe everyone is a learner, an educator, and everyone can take leadership. We ask people to talk about what they'd be doing if their human rights were fully expressed, and we equip people to commit to taking positive action. We had to look at once the, the spirit, the attitude that we brought to the civil rights movement. People still think they must use words like, you know, struggle and fight, which often can really project a spirit of, of hostility and shutting the other out. If you are communicating clearly and with a right spirit, then other people will join you in your effort to start to move towards change. What one believes impacts the way one will work in the world. Because if one believes that everybody is evil and mean and bad, whatever, what are you gonna create with that kind of uh, approach? Is that the kind of world you want to live in? Well, each one is calling the other some negative name. I think not. There will always be something I think that humanity will need to work on to come together and build what Dr. King liked to call the beloved community. If humans are to remain human, we will almost certainly continue to have conflict. Beloved community has to do with living with each other in the context of a set of norms and values that make that conflict fruitful rather than destructive. I think the heart of our work is to build supportive, courageous relationships and to learn from each other about strategies that really work. We see ourselves in our community as part of a growing human rights movement. We're challenging one another to make justice and human dignity central to what we do with our lives. Dr. King used to like to say we will wear down those who would oppress and abuse us with our ability to accept suffering. We will still stay on this path moving towards a society that is um, fair and equitable.